46 years ago, I played my first concert in Carnegie Hall. And I've played, I, I, I dare say, perhaps nearly 100 concerts here. And they never change. They're always terrifying, glorious, marvelous experience. Eugene Stoman plays in the great concert halls of the world. Stoman does not play just for sophisticated audiences in world capitals. Every now and then, he gets his two concert grands out of storage in his Washington, D.C. apartment house and hits the road. And he heads for small-town America. He is bringing back a grand old tradition. People who traveled by train, uh, who did the tours of the United States, stopped in the smaller towns as well as the big towns. And this is what I'm doing now, except that this is an exotic way of, of uh, touring these days, and I'd like to see it revived. Why did that change? Well, I think the jet, uh, the jet era um, made it easier for artists to get from one part of the world to the other quicker, but I think it's more economical. I think it's a matter of, uh, of the fact that in the smaller communities, of course, there are smaller audiences. And that with the costs of putting on concerts and, and also the cost in terms of energy to, to the artists and to the management to book these concerts, people need great things and they want them. In many communities, they can't have them because it's not cost effective. traveled with this Stoman, he brought his concert grands to Southern College in Tennessee. He offered his audience the same program he played in Carnegie Hall, Mozart, Beethoven, Debussy, Chopin. Eugene Stoman was born in New York of Russian parents who had fled the Bolshevik Revolution. Both were musicians, and they realized in their son's early childhood that he possessed extraordinary musical talent. They were very fortunate and very loving parents in the sense they didn't want to exploit me, and they brought me to a great uh, Russian refugee, another Russian refugee, whose name was Alexander Zilotti. And this Alexander Zilotti was one of the most distinguished Russians in music in the musical life of pre-revolutionary Russia in, in St. Petersburg. Mr. Zilotti was a pupil of Franz Liszt in piano playing. He was a pupil of Tchaikovsky in composition and a pu pupil of Rimsky-Korsakov in orchestration. He was Sergei Rachmaninoff's cousin and first piano teacher. If you could, if you want credentials, <laughs> those are some kind of credentials. And I was taken to play for. Rachmaninoff, when I was a seven-year-old boy, just barely beginning to play the piano. Imagine what a, what a memory that is. And I still remember that visit to him on West End Avenue in New York. Stolman survived the difficult transition from child prodigy to seasoned master. He has been a recital and concert star for more than 50 years. greatest influences on his life, professional and personal, was the cellist Pablo Casals. We're like father and son for 20, well, from 1950 to 1973, the year that he died, 23 years, we were very, very close. And we made quite a few recordings together, and I played uh, with him as conductor, and, well, I think he was the closest person in my, my life next to my father, I would say. 
And eventually you married his widow. That's right. Probably because, at first, because I couldn't stand the idea that she would be with anybody except me. I didn't realize how much I loved her at that time, because that sort of thing was not possible. Monica Sals Estolman is artistic director of the Kennedy Center in Washington. Our years in Philadelphia. It's very high strung, as you can uh, imagine, or you've probably seen, because he is very, very, um, he's a perfectionist in every way, and therefore he's always very high strung about everything. But that's what he says. One has to overcome all the difficulties so that in spite of all of that, the music can come through. Well, yes, yes. Put your ear inside the piano. When you practice, take your ear and go inside the piano and listen to how beautiful what you're doing is. That's what you have to do. That's what so many of you have to do. You're dealing with the most marvelous miracle, great music. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. It's a real trip. Estolman shares his passion for music with students when he tours small towns. This is a master class in Collegedale, Tennessee. Okay, there you are. Now, you, give, you gave me a good example of a, of a kind of a computerized way of playing. Because, in fact, you didn't give any inflection. I mean, you, you, played, you played very nicely, very well, but, but I submit that the, the phrasing really ought to be... There should be a diminuendo. What do you say to young people who say, I'd like to become a concert artist? Don't, unless you absolutely have to. Becoming a concert artist is not the right goal. They have to be willing to suffer anything, including non-recognition. Because the entire gratification, the entire consolation is to be able to sit down at the piano or to stand up with a violin or to sing, to sing something by Schubert or to play something by Beethoven or Mozart. That's everything. And if you don't feel that way, don't, don't start out looking for your name in lights or all that. That may or may not come. And even if it comes, that's, that's, that's not happiness. Believe me, it's not happiness. Another recent stop for Estoman was Lumberton, North Carolina. The last time Estoman performed in Lumberton, he was 19 years old. Lumberton is in the cotton and tobacco farming area of North Carolina. If you head south on I-95 out of Fayetteville, you go right by it. Almost 20,000 people live here. Usually it's pretty quiet in Lumberton on a Sunday afternoon, but this Sunday, Eugene Estoman is giving a recital here. Bach, Brahms, Schumann, Ravel, Stravinsky. Estoman loves them all, and of course the question arises, who are his favorites? It would be like evaluating the Himalayas. Which mountain is the higher mountain of the lot? Well, perhaps of that lot, uh, I would have to say Mozart and Beethoven are pretty close together. If I would have to give my opinion in terms of ideas of who I think intellectually is the most marvelous, most miraculous, most extraordinary of the most extraordinary company, then I'd have to say that Mozart is the miracle, the human, I think, the, the miracle in human history. Beethoven is perhaps the greatest human accomplishment in music because uh, he, he was, he was the, the ultimate master in, in the art of composition.
been a real treat. Thank you so much for a wonderful occasion. We certainly enjoy it. We Good. certainly enjoy the concert. Thank we you. hope you come back. Soon. Thank you. It was nice to be here with you. In Los Angeles, Chicago, Washington, New York, people can attend a great musical event every night of the year. Not so in Lumberton, North Carolina. So when these people say thanks to Estoman, it is from the heart. In many a small town in America, Eugene Estoman has created the loveliest night of the year. I really enjoyed your performance. Thank you. It was wonderful. You're mighty good to come to Lumberton. You, the reaction of the public has been extremely moving to me. Very, very deeply gratifying. I can't tell you how gratifying. How much it means to me to have somebody come backstage and say this this event uh, is very significant in my life. This meant a great deal. Yeah.